Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Danganronpa. My name is Silly Billy, but you can call me Billy. Okay, Chihiro's dead. Sorry for the spoiler warning if you're just turning in. Shouldn't have watched this video first. Chihiro died. Uh, let's get into her murder investigation. Let's face it, we'll be here, at least I'll be here for the next two, two and a half hours. And you will probably have eh, like one hour less of that, maybe a little more. Anyway, we're gonna be here for a while, so let's just start the investigation right this second. Okay, I'm going to start investigating uh, Chihiro's body. Hi. For now, pay attention to the wall. I just want to talk to Chihiro. I mean, she's dead, but uh, maybe she has something useful to say. Like, oh, it was, uh, it was Miyakuya. He did it. I'm actually kind of scared to make predictions <laughs> because I was right the first time. I got it really quickly. <laughs> And I don't want to be that guy that just gets it right on the money every single time. I want to be surprised. But I have a feeling it's Toko. I, I, th I think story-wise it makes the most sense that she did it. So yeah, let's see if, that, if that's right. So for now, let's pay attention to the wall. Yeah? I said it once already. There's a word written there. Uh, on the wall? Makoto, did you not see this? But Like, why? I, I just want to watch to the body. The word bloodless is written on the wall in blood. So... I don't think it's any kind of dying message. It's just too strange. But, you know, the thing about writing bloodless in blood, doesn't that kind of sound familiar? A murderous friend who kills again and again using bizarre and brutal methods. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodless is written in the victim's own blood. Oh, right, so this is that killer they were talking about. Like a ghost, attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack! Genocide Jack. The ultimate murderous fiend! Creating a reputation of abnormal, downright cruel killings. What is this? Then this is some copycat killer trying to imitate Genocide Jack's style? Or he's here. But why would anyone do that? Perhaps it's the work of the real Genocide Jack. The real? Wait, are you saying the Genocide Jack is here in the school? No way. There's no way. But going so far as to ride bloodlust at the scene, I am surprised at their stupidity. I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. Uh. <laughs> what is it now? Toko. Eden was pointing towards the entrance to the girl's locker room. Uh. Toko was the last to arrive, and now she was just standing there. No! Why? Why? Uh oh. Oh, she she fainted. She fainted. That did not sound good. Toko. You know, rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started trying to shake her away. Let's call her Miguel or Aoi. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up. Oh, that's right. I just remembered what she said about how she faints anytime she sees blood. Oh. But like she was in a room with a dead person. Why? So she is hemophobic, yeah? I imagine she does not watch many horror films then. Toko, can you hear me? Hey, you gotta wake up. As if she'd heard her, Toko suddenly shot awake. As in, she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was such a strange reaction. I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. Hi. <laughs> In no time flat, she was just standing up. Ignoring the physical contortions she had to go through, her motions were totally haphazard. What? So sorry about that. I was just so shocked, you know? It happens, right? Was I the only one? Doko, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Oh, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going crazy. She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. it. Uh, that's a scary laugh. The world is a front and back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is uh, quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. No, 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 everything's fine. At least the stutter's gone. Oh, well... Thanks for telling me. I'll remove it from my speech then. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> it's clear to me that everything is not fine. Your eyes seem strangely vacant. It might be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. Very well. You take care of the girl and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. 
Can I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura Mondo on guard duty again? Hold on a second. Rushing to an investigation. The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. <laughs> There's no question that Chihiro was murdered by someone among us. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Oh, hi. Where did you come from? Right as rain! But don't take it as a bad thing, it's just a fact of life! Because that's how graduation works! Ugh. Then it's happened again? Is that what you're saying? Another one of us killed a fellow classmate? What? Does that freak you out? You guys got no balls, you know that? Is it just nothing down there at all? Well, I'll let you pray tonight if you want. Actually, I don't have any either. I'm sorry. Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? I sure did, chum. Allow me to present the next Monokuma file. I know how much you must be looking forward to it. So please, do your very tippy top best on this investigation. Bye bye! Do we really have to do another investigation? Yep. Well, there's somebody dead, right? If you don't want to die, let's do it. I hate this. I can't take it anymore. I hate it too! I've had enough! I'm getting out of here! Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run! Just accept it already. After all, blood is just a liquid. A dead body is a simple object. You are very enthusiastic about all of this, are you not? Natural. How can I not be? If we don't unmask the culprit, we all die. That's true, but to jump into it so soon... What? what do you want to die? Sorry. Fine, then go off and die somewhere. Right now, go ahead. You're a waste of space. D damn you. A dead body is an object! Jiro wasn't an object! Show a little respect or I'll beat it into ya! Everyone stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Byakuya said. Uh, Kyoko! If we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Byakuya is right, then Genocide Jack is somehow the one who killed Chihiro. That's right. Then unless we do something, more victims could start piling up. Uh, forget all victims! If we mess this up, we're all dead meat! Hey. Hold on, hold on! If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. Uh, what? I don't remember a rule like that. I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would all be over, right? The new rule has been added to the regulations menu. So That's what I was wondering. Yeah, now you just can't kill anyone and have no witnesses. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Hey. Well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out on at least the potential of a serial killer angle. <laughs> just one would totally murder that possibility. Farewell for now, I'll catch you guys at the class trial. I can't say I understand his thinking, but if you kill up to two people, then one more person's life could still be in danger. Which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. You, you need to shut the bingers up! Oh no, here we go again. Well, for now, Taka and me are going to drop Toko off at a room. Nice, I'm gonna get dropped off! We have no time to stand around here. We must begin our investigation too sweet. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that she may be French. <laughs> but like, Ludenberg is not a French name. Right? Right? <laughs> if we do not solve the mystery of who killed Shihiro, then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. That's true. I hate this, but if we want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choice. Uh-oh! Hey, Mikoto, do you have a second? Yeah? Do you need something for me? Naturally. Of course. Life without purpose is quite dull, you know? Um, so, what do you need? I'm going to let you cooperate me... I'm going to let you cooperate with me during this investigation. Huh? What? I'm purchasing your talent. The same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. S solve No, I just... You seem to have some limited use. Which is why we've chosen you. Which is why I've chosen you. You have to... Yeah, you have the honor of contributing to my investigation. So, you're inviting me to come with you? You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible, though. Let's go. Now then, let's sh Now then, shall we get started? But, but, but We need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. Yeah. I don't really know what just happened, but it looks like we'll be working with Byakuya for this one. Okay, so I don't think Byakuya did it. I think he may be able to kill somebody. Absolutely. But this is not his game. Like, he would make it more exciting than this, I think. 
Uh, but it's a good motive to to enlist me as his helper, right? Uh, I don't think any of these people did it, uh, by the way. Let's start with the blunt object that killed her, apparently. There's a dumbbell on the floor, and this is a blood stain. There's a blood stain on the dumbbell. Hmm. The Monokuma file said a blow to the head with a blunt object is what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder weapon? That's I don't imagine it could have been anything else. But it could have been, though. So somebody has to be pretty strong to swing that, right? Maybe like a Sakura type? I don't think it is Sakura, but just saying, there's blood on this poster. The poster got some blood on it. It must have happened during the murder. That's not a hint. Like, there's there's something written on there. Yukyo. Is that so? Is that a, syn a synonym again? <laughs> the poster's got some blood. Yeah, yeah. So bloodlust. The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. What's the meaning behind it? Bloodlust. Is it something? Can we twist this around again some way? Soul dolb. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound good. There's blood there. There's a fresh blood sitting on the carpet. It must have been splattered with blood during the murder. So like, she probably fell to the ground and then was tied up. I could feel the life draining out of my own body. No, the life is draining from her body, man. Come on. It's a dead body. Jiro's dead body. Very but the more I look, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide's Jack handiwork. Well, but... What? But we're still not sure he did it. That's what you want to say? I wonder about that. Actually, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else and carried here. She was very light, that is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her. But still, I still think she came here on her own. By choice. What makes you say that? She'd been talking a lot about how she wanted to get stronger. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? You know, I myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she was probably avoiding it then. Uh, avoiding it? Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So we can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead she came to exercise in the middle of the night? Perhaps. But it's difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. Aha! She didn't want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. So you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that she also would have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. Okay, so Sakura's account, that's interesting. So I don't think Mondo has anything useful to say, so maybe Kyoko does? She took her time examining Shihiro's corpse. She poked and prodded, going over every inch of lifeless body. Hmm. You're a very strange woman, you know, being able to touch a dead body with absolutely no trouble. She seems to be concentrating pretty hard. It's like she can't even hear us. Interesting. Byakuya, what do you... No, that's not Byakuya, that's the letters. Byakuya, what do you have to say, my friend? If you have time to talk, you have time to start investigating. Okay, that's uh, very useful, thank you so much. Uh, is there anything on the ceiling? Anything on the floor? Anything I'm missing? What do I need to look at? Mondo. I haven't talked to you yet. No, that's a door. Mondo. Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard your hero talk about it, right? Oh, I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned this, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about that stuff. The cause of Chihiro is complex. I can't help wondering what it might be. Ah, so it was Mondo that I needed to talk to. Now I believe it's about time for us to move on. Thank you. Yeah, already? Well, I, there wasn't anything left, right? The glues won't magically appear by standing around here. I need to check every aspect of this case. That's true, but... If you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so pushy. I got caught up with the wrong person this time. So, where is Toko? So, this is her next location. This place is related to the investigation? Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? Okay. The gun! Maybe this gun was used to... No. Impossible. If that were true, Chihiro would be riddled with holes. True. Uh, tools. There's a bunch of different pool-related items on the shelf, which have nothing to do with the case. I know. There's a rope. Maybe? No, there's Biakuya. What else is there to see here, though? The buoy? A flotation donut. I don't think it's related to what happened to Chiro. But there was a coin. Thank you. So, uh, I'm guessing talking to Biakuya is not gonna help. We could at least try and figure out what we're doing here. Yep, I thought as much. Oh, the scanner. 
If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? What? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? We can do that? That's cool. You call for me? Has he been domesticated? That's it seems that Makoto has a question for you. you need sure, something? what's up? Um, well, it's just about the card reader. Yep. yep, the card readers have all been designed to interface with each other, each of your handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. As it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked. And it's impossible for two people to in, a, in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? If there was some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl, the ceiling mounted Gatling gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter. So then. That means only a girl can go in the locker's room, and only boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Chihiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means. Hey, Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? You're psychic as well? No, we're not getting another Sayaka situation, right? Since Shihiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So in As words, such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. Ah. I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So, you managed to sniff out the loophole in the regulations. Hmm. Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. Yeah. <laughs> You're treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. And now then, since the dead can't actually talk, they're not people anymore. They're things. Yeah. Get it? Got it? Good. Oh, wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole, but in order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it. So, uh... So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Byakuya and get your poop together. Or else I'll charge you with your criminal negligence. No more questions. Figure out the rest on your own darn self. Well, I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental faculties, so I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. So, you could steal somebody's handbook for yourself, right? We came to the main hall. So, what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? Ah, again. Um, there is stuff here. There was a coin in this the last time. There's a mailbox here. Could there be something inside? Oh, it's an e-handbook. Oh, no, wait, there's three of them. But what are they doing here? Hmm. So you finally found them. Uh, did you know these were here by you, Kuya? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. Oh! So then, these handbooks belong to Junko, Leon and Sayaka? You can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks, and what I did... It's probably Sayaka's, I'm guessing? Yep, Sayaka Maizono! You're right! This is Sayaka's handbook! Now do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah, you can't kill a dead student, so I what? get it. Hold on a second. What's wrong? Very That's strange. One of the handbooks it won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Jungo's name when I started it up. Then the one that won't turn on is Leon's, right? It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Yeah. I remember this. It wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Hey! What? That Eve handbook is essential to a student's life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break! It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure, and it's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but um, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does? But it's a secret! I wouldn't want you to go breaking anymore. What? The Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hmm, hard to say. You know what I think? I think his handbook isn't actually broken. But you might ask, how could that be? Leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. What just happened? Monokuma said it isn't broken. But it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. Okay then, this should be enough to get things rolling. 
Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah, we need to find out who killed Chihiro. To be exact, not quite. What? Uh, be what? What? Certainly, I want to reveal Chihiro's killer, but more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then you really think... You truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro? Absolutely. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. Sure, let me hear it. That murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? What? There's nobody else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using bizarre and brutal methods. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. They say he's killed thousands of people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still, could one of us really be a demented, psychotic killer like that? You're not wrong to wonder, but words mean little right now. I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence you need. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro. Hey, you two! Who's that? Oh, big trouble! I need your help! Uh-oh. We're busy. Leave us alone. But it's an emergency! Emergency! Come on, please! You gotta help me! Okay, sure. I like Hina. Please! This is a serious emergency! Please, please! You gotta help me! Just calm down, okay, Hina? But, but, it's an emergency! Ah, I thought skipping over it would reveal something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh shoot! Don't be so quick, you boy! Gimme that, boy! An emergency, what happened? Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Byakuya? Since it's Toko, I must admit, I'm intrigued. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd say no, and that would be the end of it. Okay, come on. Wait for us, Hina. Let's go. Looks like she's headed to the dorms. To Toko's room, most likely. Okay. Toko, Toko, Toko. Toko. Beep. Hello. Is Toko inside? Some kind of emergency. Hey, oi. You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. <laughs> so, what is this emergency? Well, after what happened in the girls' locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check on her. You know, see how things were going. But when we did, it was weird. She refused to come out, and she kept saying all this weird stuff. We should try talking to her ourselves. Toko! I may as well give it a shot. Bing bong! The door swung open, slowly and silently. Oh no. Oh, hi. Holy crap! An aura of negativity flowed from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. Makoto is really good in sensing auras. <laughs> That's the third time he talked about sensing auras, I believe. Nothing. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you holding yourself up in your room. Let's just say that we are. Leave me alone. Hey, the stutter is back. Yes, yes I love it. But could you open up just for a second? You won't allow it. Uh oh. Huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control. Oh yay. And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? She's been acting like that the whole time. When I rang a little while ago. I'll drive out the killer! Drive out the murderous fiend! So is Toko admitting that she did it? It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there alone, so I tried to bust down the door. But it felt like something was holding it shut in the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Toko was scared enough to even bar her door? Does she think the serial killer Genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Is that why Toko's so scared? Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Byakuya could, because she likes him. Hey, uh, Byakuya, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean? Sure, whatever. Uh, you gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Well, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Byakuya stood in front of the door, not making sound, and pressed the doorbell. After a few moments. Hi. Leave me alone. You're all so annoying. Ah, Bakula. <laughs> Bakula, as in Dracula. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry. Nothing ever again. I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control again. And with that, the door slammed shut. Even Biakuya can pull it off. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Hold on. Yeah. Hey, Biakuya, what was Toki talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Uh, oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. Uh, but... If I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. I don't believe you! 
Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's well go. then, let's go. Without waiting for a reply, Biakuya sped away. Biakuya! And I heard to catch up. Finally, his feet brought him to a stop in front of a certain room. The library? Come on, let's go in. Okay, then. Uh, it's probably here, right? If I remember, on the other side of this door, it's the archive, right? Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here? It'll all make sense once you're inside. Am I gonna get stabbed? Uh, let's see, file. Oh, I'm just looking at the bookshelf. So many files stuffed into the shelf. What's in all these things? That's enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the diet or something? <laughs> what? Uh, no, I mean the ones with real power. The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. If you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. These are some very interesting people in here. You're kidding, right? Hmm. Am I? I'll just let it go for now. No, I want to see! Come on, man! Without really thinking about it, I picked up one at random. Hmm. Ah, you have sharp eyes indeed to select that file. Eh? That's a report on the presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. Can you please just show me what's inside of these things? Come on, man! There's a ton of thick files stuffed into the bookshelves. If you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal person wouldn't ever want to look at. Be careful. What do you mean? All those files are the investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh? So is there anything useful in any of these? Uh, it's a desk lamp. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Biakuya use in the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. And there's a coin, thank you. Am I looking for one book in particular? Oh, I saw that. I saw something up here. See that? It doesn't let me look at that, but there is something there. Oh, oh, it's just a camera. Ah, oh, come on. I thought I was clever. Okay, so there's a box here, then. That's what I'm supposed to look at. There's a wooden box. It's empty. Although, judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. There was an extension core plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. So, are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of the room right here. It's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This... this can't be for real, right? That's your guy's problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it with a lie. Well, it's not that, it's just... it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but... I mean, there's just so much! How could anyone have put this all together? Hmm. Oh, give me a second, guys. Okay, so, little update. Uh, the doorbell rang. That was the mailman. Then the doorbell rang again. That was the neighbor coming to pick up the pick the package that the doorman just delivered. <laughs> or the doorman, I mean the delivery man. <laughs> What's a doorman? Um, oh, and I also went to get some uh, paper notes. Oh, boy. But I've had a little talk with the neighbor. Now the paper notes are starting to melt. Oh, you'll be hearing me eat as I do be a queer choice. <laughs> I suppose it goes to show how much hope speak Trudy wields. Or perhaps the mastermind might have wanted, sorry, to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, it's no use. I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. What's wrong? You still can believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. What do you mean, usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple. Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. Um, 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 um. Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? The documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, so there's no doubt. Uh, hold on a second, you're saying you've read all these documents and more than once? All this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why? My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Yeah? Uh -huh. 
Members of the Togami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. Ah, uh -huh. How is that possible? So I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. My family is a member of that council. Why are you here? Like, honestly, what are you doing here? Are you here for sport? Are you here for fun? Are you the killer? I have within the blood, and I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. But to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, um, 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 I like to review whatever documents or materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered- Oh, shoot, I pre accidentally pressed. There was a clue in there. Maybe pause the screen for a second. I don't know what it says, but you will. This is beyond believing or not believing. Biakuya is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interests me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports has always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. It's excellent mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Biakuya grabbed a specific file from the shelf. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack case has been compiled in here. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that at every crime scene the word bloodless is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. It's exactly the same as what happened to Tiro. Best part is yet to come. For the second characteristic, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found it. In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse, her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. Ah! So how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's, right. That's a key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So the culprit isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. That right there is the evidence that Genocide Jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Uh, then Genocide Jack really is. Such a brutal, fiendish killer really is walking among us? Such things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? <laughs> I never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. Now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what we've already seen? You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. <laughs> uh, no, I'll take the police report. No, that's Biakuya, right? Oh no, this is done the thick files. All this file, blah blah blah, they're filled with graphics, it's the kind of thing, blah blah blah. Wait, you're not gonna let me look at it? Really, bro? Okay, sure, I'll talk to you. About the Genocide Jack file, could you let me see it? Fine. Well, you didn't bag, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it in there, but you can't take it with you. Paper note up. Oh. Can you do the talking, please? Nah. Be clear, I handed me the file, and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Alright. I need my hand stop. I read the page with photos from the scene of each crime, I'm only collector. Ugh! With the scissors. Yeah. The names of Genocide's Jack victims ran on for several pages. Okay, there's a lot of names, but one thing became perfectly clear as I read it. All of the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust, yeah, we already know this, guys, come on. Now, take a look at the next page and you'll find another interesting tidbit about it. The next page? Profiling results? All of the crimes took place either on weekdays at night or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for it. This confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, so it IS TOKO! The key point here is that the culprit may well have split personality. A split personality? Like the kind of thing you see on TV? It's Mike! Mike did it, guys! It's, uh, it's Mal! <laughs> oh no, he's here! So I'm part of another totally unbelievable story, but this one is way more unbelievable than anything up until this point. Or maybe... A paper note. Alright, we should get going. Where are we going? 
anywhere but here. We finished our business here, haven't we? Biakuya! As usual, Biakuya turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. So Toko did do it then. Or is there another person with the idea here? Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have Come on, enough of your annoying misapprehension. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room too. And the others might have come up with some info that might be useful. I'm at it. I need to find out everything I can. Okay, let's go. I think we're starting at that place then. Let's start with the locker rooms and let's eat a paper note. Oh, what do you find? I cannot reveal that just yet. Okay, so he has evidence. Sorry, click through it. He has evidence, but he's not gonna tell it. But I guarantee you that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Oh yeah, Miss Lunenberg said she'd witnessed something worthwhile too. Really? What did she see? It's like when a girl bullies a boy she likes, right? Right? Okay, so where is Celeste right now? The warehouse by the dorm. She was there, but all at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Okay, so check out Celeste at the dorm. Uh, first, we're gonna check out the boys' room. Hey! Ho ho! I knew it! The posts are switched! And there's a stain here. Oh, look at that. So the, the killing happened in here, not in the other room. I was wondering why they had this poster. The girls, I meant, why they had a poster of a sexy girl. Because it was clearly hanging in this room. And now it's just one boy band. That makes more, that makes so much more sense. No time, I need to talk to the poster. The big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. A girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker rooms. There is something that has been bothering me about the locker rooms. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee? In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room, and it left a stain. I noticed it earlier, the stain has disappeared. But still, isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain to begin with? Yep, there we go. So this has been switched. That has been switched. What? How How does that make sense? So is this another situation of switching again, where this is actually the boys' room and that was actually the girls' room? But why would you then switch this? I don't get that yet. Okay, so uh, Kyoko is not going to give us any information, but she told us, told us to investigate the body again and that her handbook is gone. That's weird. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I'd better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Jiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. But yeah, I think this is the electrical cord. Does that make sense? This rope has a plug. It is the extension cord. There we go. Wait, so then this isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Jihiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head, which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right, there's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. I didn't see any reaction to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through the genocide jack file, something is not quite right. What does this all mean? Somebody's trying to imitate this, which again makes me think it's to... Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be Toko, but just somebody's imitating to be genocide jack. And it is somebody that knows more about genocide jack. So somebody who has the same ties as Byakuya, or who has listened to Byakuya tell us this. So, it could be Byakuya, but I don't think it is. Uh, the best guess I have still is Toko, because she seems like the type of person who would find out about this and make this a murder mystery for him. The true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chihiro. And to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at Genocide Jack case file one more time. Yeah, okay, so we need to reinvestigate the library. Let's start there, and then we go to Celeste. And then, was this the box, right? The wooden box is empty. The extension cord was in there before. That isn't enough. That isn't what's gonna do it for me. Oh, maybe it's the f because of the lamp. I need to check that. Biakuya grabbed that one thing from over here and put it over there. It sure is dark over there. Okay. Not what I was looking for. I want to take another look at the Genocide Jack case file. I know it was around here somewhere. It's gone! Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that. I can't think of anyone but Biakuya. Still more I need to check. Okay. 
So where did the PC go? That's gone. Can I not check that out? That's annoying. I know it was there. Oh, wait. Extension cord. No, not what I was looking for. The lamp! The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see it's not plugged in. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. But last time I saw it, it was definitely on. And it was definitely right there. Oh, that's right. Byakuya was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Yeah, so the lamp has been used. Can I leave? That's good. Nice. Celeste, where are you? So, find Celeste, find Biakuya. I know where Celeste is, so I'm going to start there. And then hope I find Biakuya on the way. Maybe we should have confessed our embarrassing secrets after all. Darn it, I'm sorry, Chihiro. It's all because I wasn't strong enough. Ah, oh, poor guy. Hi, there you are. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing! It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towers, there is an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? I know you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might misdirect you, but I see it for pointless. Then you did find something? <laughs> Very well, I will tell you, and only you. Last night I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. Yeah, I also saw that. Oh, really? M man, we found this out, bro. This was right before midnight. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. She stuffed the jacket into a bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, I assumed she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but it would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girl's locker room. If she hadn't broken a rule, none of this would ever have happened. <laughs> You get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the locker's room at late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the track jacket or the duffel bag Celeste said she saw Chihiro carrying. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Back to the burning room we go, right? To the garbage area thing. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, is... I believe Hifumi is still the garbage man, right? Oko! This is Togo's room. I should probably just leave her alone for now. Okay, sure. So, where do we go now? I want to find Biakuya, but I don't know where he would be. Maybe there's somebody here that can tell me more? Hina. Miguel, what you got? Oh, Hina, how's Togo doing? The same as before. She won't come out and she just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. So I just left her there. Y you left her? My head was all swimmy, and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course. Of course. There's two things I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts. Really? <laughs> I bet Chihiro would have liked to eat more donuts. I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? Yeah, she was a little bit strange. Didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like, like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invi invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's true. And it wasn't just us either. It's like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? I don't know, she talked to the boys all the time, because she's a boy! I knew it! Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite? Uh. Oh, wait! M maybe... Maybe she was just used to guys spoiling her. The law says she can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Hey, Ava's account has been added to the truth bullets section. Again. Oh, wait, is, does that mean it's time? Are we already ready? Mm -hmm. Oh no, oh no, is it already time? Uh oh. Last time I was pretty sure that I know who did- Well, now I'm still pretty sure it's Toko. But I'm going into this way less certain. Hey, friends. Am I blind or am I missing someone? Yeah, Toko's not here. 
Uh-oh. And Toko is... You really don't remember? Kidding! I'm just kidding. How could I forget your little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna do? That's weird. Okay, Doki, I'll go ahead and drag her out here, kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. Ugh. And just like he said, a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. Hi, Toko. I told him I didn't want to go, but he forced me. I can't believe he would drag a girl around. You are terrible! Phew, so now everybody's here, right? Okay then, hustle onto the elevator and let's get this show on the road. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. I like how this is the same image as before, but now this time Leon is gone. That's kind of brutal. And there's gonna be... Then Chihiro is of course also gone. And I'm guessing then there will be a next trial and then one of these people will be gone again. Oh man. Hey, friends. What do you think? I'm redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? And waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Good, good. You're rip raring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Okay, then, let's get this show on the road. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. Oh man, I feel like I have so fewer clues than last time. Okay, uh, let's start with the skills, because I have quite a few of them now. Oh, I, and I increased my SP, that's nice. What I want to have is everything that allows me to make more mistakes. Handiwork allows you to reload two bullets at once, effective during the bullet time battle. Absolutely give me that. Finish prepping. Alright, let's do it. Let's talk about the murder weapon! Mm -hmm. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Was it the halter? Yeah, it, it kind of was, right? Locker room dumbbell, yeah. I didn't look at my bullet. Wait, give me a second. I have never looked at my thing again. That's stupid. Anyway, it appears it was... It appears it was a head. That's true. Yeah, that's also true. Well, here you go. Wait, what? Think you have some proof that contradicts what I said? Oh, yeah, I... Yeah, no, okay, I get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. That... No! Ha, bro, that went way too fast. Ah, okay. Well, that's the second mistake. Where are you? There you go. Ba-bam! Why would you guess that just randomly? There's no mistake and no room for doubt on this mm -hmm. one. You looked at her head wound? Yeah, of course! Why wouldn't you? Yes! That's so creepy! No, of course it isn't! What? No! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Okay. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Aha, uh -huh. who do you think? For real? Chihiro's killer is... Toko? The fiendish serial killer. Oh, of Genocide course. Yeah. Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? I don't think he did. A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Yeah, let me know. What is it? For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines. So think about them as obstacles. Oh, but there's a way to keep this white nose from getting in your way. Pl uh, press the right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. Uh, if, you, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease, so take careful aim. I have no idea what that means, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. Okay, I, it, it isn't. I'm pretty sure it's kind or higher, like medium. Yeah, okay, so what about this white noise do you mean? The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure oh, that's... Oh. There know. we go, I'm getting it. That's, impossible. that's not right. Why? What makes it impossible? I like this. Yeah. Oh, no! You... Okay, thank you. <laughs> that was mean. <laughs> that was so mean. <laughs> Okay, but we did get it because the reload time was uh, low. I found this file. 
While I was yeah, we found a file. Yes, it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the genocide. What? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. <laughs> more importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every genocide jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every genocide jack case. The first is that a bloody message. The bloody message and then the hanging. The other characteristic of every genocide jack case, which is that the victim is positioned. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher ups in the police department. Yep, interesting. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high level police officials were aware of it? Well, there's only one logical answer I can think of. They are here. But are it's they, though? Because the culprit in this case is the real genocide Jack. Or it's you. Shh, Mondo, please. You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Mm hmm. There we go. Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. <laughs> it's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it because she has the idea. Because it's Mike! Okay, let's shoot her. I mean, shoot her argument. Hangman's Gambit. Oh, right, what was this again? Uh, what am I looking for here? Uh, S. I'm guessing an S. S T. Oh, schizophrenic skill. Right? Sk 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 skiz. 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 Double Z. Sk skiz. Skizzy. Schizo. There we go. Schizo. Schizo. Yeah, right. I was looking for DID, so I was confused. Genocide Jack. Has a split personality? Yep. The only thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. Uh, she arrived late. Now her behavior changed, right? Or the fainting? Yeah, it was this one. Oh, I have little hearts. The world is a front and the back. It's happening, anybody, blah, blah, blah. We already had this. <laughs> I'm evil. That's for sure. <laughs> Melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Yeah. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Oh, guys, guys, it's not Toko. She she feels offended by us saying it, so therefore she can't have done it, right? So when Toko trapped herself in mm -hmm. it's because she was scared of genocide. Jack. No, it's because she was scared the genocide Jack would get free. I won't let the genocide Jack have control. It's not smart to say that. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Uh-oh. Last night, just before Monokuma gave his mother yeah, they had old me, she said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. Yeah, that's not smart to, to share. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! <laughs> I would run, Hifumi. You said if I kept my promise, Go out with me. That's the only reason I promise. Ah, uh, Toko, come on. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I, I still. I swear I tried it, to control it. I still have the feeling it might not be her. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person you don't mean. Mm -mm. Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second, she's back. She crazy? 
Oh gosh, dang it, that's scary. Is it me you were hoping to see? <laughs> Genocide Jill. <laughs> What happened to you? Not Toko. That's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one small. Uh-oh. Oh, she's scary. I'm just sitting here baffled. I'm sorry I'm not giving a lot of commentary here. I just have the biggest smile on my face. I'm, I am I don't know what's happening here. I just really enjoy it. This is the murderous fiend genocide check? This is... This is... This is beyond insane. Miss Jack, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Yeah, I thought so. Of course it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally Yeah, uh-oh. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac mm -hmm. go wild all over top. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac. But life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. What is she, though? There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. Is she, though? A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate, Yeah, that I remember. The embarrassing mystery is, of course, that so Toko had, had the secret. There we go. I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Well, it could just be Byakuya, right? Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but, but something's still bothering me. But she said, I, I need to get more details about all of this. I, I, I get a feeling that it may actually just be Biakuya. Statue status of the dead body. Okay, where's the white noise? Yeah. 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 Oh no no! I didn't want to fight that. <laughs> okay, it's fine. The modus operandi matches completely. Right. Oh! The modus operandi matches completely. I think it does. Was that it? No, it's Biakuya, isn't it? Ah, shoot, I missed it again. Ah, come on. Get it over. Go, 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 Oh, terrible me. And it has to be a man because the murder was committed in the boys' room and then he switched everything. So it had to have been a boy. And I'm guessing maybe Chihiro was a dude after all. What are you gonna say? I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using Ragu or Chef Boyardee. <laughs> nice. What a dumb analogy. I love it. Uh, which is the head blow. Uh, clear difference. The fatal injury. I noticed that too. The cause of death is different. The genocide Jack murders. All the victims were killed the same way. Yep, stabbed with a scissor. the case file. They were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. <laughs> oh, wait, I just realized something. If I go... Uh, I have a gift 
in my present item box, which is a, scissors, a pair of scissors. And I was wondering, who could I give this to? But I'm guessing Toko didn't do it, which means she's probably gonna be around for the next round of free time. I'm definitely gonna give her the pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so morbid. The second difference is related to how it was suspended. If the, in the photos of the other genocide jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you see a clear difference. Uh, suspended. Oh, what was used? Yeah, okay, sure. Blah, 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 blah. It, it's about... Uh, sorry. Oh, no. Two and a half hearts. I mean the one below it. There we go. <laughs> She's so freaking crazy. Big Mac? Is that... Wait, why am I Big Mac? <laughs> what? What makes me Big Mac? Clayton is deaf. <laughs> the lolly girl. Oh no. Oh, weep language. It's just Japanese, but when translated. Chihiro was a friend? No, Chihiro was a girl. Uh, she couldn't have killed because Chihiro was a girl because Chihiro was her lover? What? I think I figured it out. I know why she couldn't have killed Chihiro. Because Chihiro was a friend. Why? Chihiro was her friend because Chihiro was her lover. I... What? None of these are true, right? Because Chihiro was a boy. Oh, it was the girl option. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo, died right on the money! Oh, right, I noticed that too in the book. She only killed guys. I mean, I looked at that with the... Duh, I should have realized this. I, I saw it in the names, it was only guys. Yeah, she's just incredibly sexist. <laughs> They're all guys. They were all guys? I would uh, take a step back, Hero. She uh, could uh, come for us any second. <laughs> Wait, didn't didn't Hifumi say that? Like, I bet you're secretly in on boy on boy action. He was right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, does she have scissors here? That's creepy. Oh gosh, she has a lot of them. What? Oh, that's so scary. Uh, run! Just everybody, run! <laughs> That's so creepy. What? That's that's ridiculously creepy. Me neither. So one person who could have copied the genocide jack cases is Biakuya. Where is he? Nope, nope. Uh, scrolling the wrong way again. Biakuya, hello, my friend. Mr. Togami did it? Yes, he did. Then, the reason pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! Oh, that's so fun. I... I had a feeling Byakuya was gonna kill at some point, but I thought he was gonna be like the main big bad. He was gonna be the toughest case of them all. I didn't expect him to kill so soon. It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy, I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Yeah, but how did you know? Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, yeah. there's something very strange. How did you know it was a okay, girl? Then. New element has been added. Oh no, not one, not another one. <laughs> I'm going to add something called truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button, then, then you'll memorize that weak spot. No, <laughs> this memorized phrase can only be shot in once as a single truth bullet. Oh no, if you shoot or chase the truth bullet, it will disappear from the jewel cylinder. Oh no. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your load of truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, this is so scary. Mm-hmm, okay. 
what you can say. Monokuma file number two, yeah. So, you said Biakio was acting weird before we found Uh, sure. Okay, before we found the body. No, it's probably not this. He is so weird. I wanna... Please just shoot him through the face. Oh, it was right! Wait, what? The victim was Chihiro. Right? Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Yeah. That, yeah, okay, so all that trouble for just that. What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead, show us. I I like how he's just playing this game because it doesn't really make sense, right? I, even if he didn't, I mean, everybody knows he's just a mysterious guy, but I can imagine that he would get upset by being confronted but because at the end of the day, if he isn't doing it, then his life is at stake as well if people suspect he does it. So, in any case, if anybody puts the blame on you and you didn't do it, or in any case, you would just say, you would just get, get outraged, right? Because you would always try to get that image across that you're not it. It's like he, he doesn't even care. Yeah, thank you, Makoto. There is more to it. Hey, Kyoko, to the rescue again. The difference between this case and the other genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Biakuya is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be? I don't know. Shoot, do we need to... Oh, no, make your argument. Oh, no, do I need to flashback? Library desk lamp. Maybe I need to do the flashback thing again. What? The difference between the cases? Uh-huh. You want me to explain it again? Uh, please. When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. That's true. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. Uh, I should have copied that. Yep. Was it really a rope? Yes, it was. There must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Oh, on the road you can see how many lines there are. Where did you get it? That's not true, you lying! Oh, uh, Bingus! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> For the habit. <laughs> I get I get rolled into Mondo's speech here. I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope... Yeah, but this is so dumb to lie about, Byakuya. There's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. Oh, right. So the fact that he didn't bring it up by himself is sus on its own. I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. Well, thank you for testifying. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. You're doing all the work for me. Yeah, that is. He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned, as if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. I don't disagree with not dis. Wait, I don't disagree with not disagreeing. So that's four negatives, which make up. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? Is it not him? Killed her in the girl's locker room, then disguised my crime. What what is he doing? Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, was th what was that just now? Something that's not right. Jiro's body was definitely found in the girl's locker room, but does that mean can I really just accept what Byakuya Bia said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off about what he said. Uh, the scene of the crime, which is in the boys' locker room. Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. Yeah. Uh, rest oh, of the wait. Scene? Uh, Hero talked about hearing construction work, right? Is that what he meant? Hey, Byakya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakya, who'd been so confident up until now, Maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. So is 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 Monokuma able to switch the rooms? Is that what he heard? There was something that was switched between the boys and the girls' locker room. Uh, there were a couple of things. There's the poster and there's the 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 boys' room uh, carpet. But let's go with the poster. I got it. 
a picture of a big boob <laughs> That sounds so dumb. You, meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. I would, I would like that. Again, sure. That doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. Why not? So you're saying that Why not? What kind of a gender stereotyping case is this, huh? People being boys, girls, it doesn't matter. You can be anything. I skipped how we. Oh wait, this is the the rug. It was moved! It was the rug! Where is it? The boys look a room carpet. There we go. Yeah, I got it! Is she a boy? It, so, is it Toko then? Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Well, there was Leon's handbook that was broken. The broken E handbook, there we go. So what does he know about this? What do you got? She must have hacked her E handbook. Hacked her E handbook? No, of course not. I'm sure that would have been no problem for No, I don't think that's I don't either. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Which is? Oh, wait, he saw this too. That's interesting. Oh, wait, so how does he know that? No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's. Oh, no, is it Hero? Uh, I have no clue who it is at this point. There could be three people. No, wait, it's, it's definitely not Toko. Or, or Jill, I guess. I could still be Byakya, but is it maybe Hero? Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just Yeah. He, she's not a girl. Like no way she could have got into the boy. Okay then. I vote for Biakia. Is that it then? Jiro was killed in the girls locker room and Biakia is the only one who is the one who did it, really? But still, I don't know what else it can do. Hold on a second. Are you so sure she couldn't get in? Yeah. What? What are you talking about? What other way is Yeah, she well, is a boy. She is a boy. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Oh no. Well, alright then. I declare an official class trial recess. I like how Monokuma's just toying with the rest. Now then, what is it you want to show us? Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? You did touch about the overall, so I'm guessing... We're all going to the body, and then we're going to reveal that... Wait, we're not gonna look under her skirt, right? I don't want to touch a dead body! Or, not in that way, because... Uh, touching the body is fine, I mean, getting clues and such, but... I... This is... This is getting... <laughs> this is, uh... Feeling a little bit like necrophilia at this point. <laughs> but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. What? No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. I don't think so. so. Leave this to me. Sakura. What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. <laughs> okay. Here I, <laughs> Here I go. I'm going Sorry, in. <laughs> Please excuse the intrusion. I'm sure she's fine with it. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine the body. What? This is... It, what is this... Oh, my. <laughs> not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring widely at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... This girl is... Is what? Is a boy. There we go! Ding, ding, ding! Right on the money! Confirming this fact. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right Yeah, of course you did. Was totally oh out. no, I called her cute at the start. No! Oh, guess I'm gay now. <laughs> I fell for a trap. It's the oldest trick in the book. Okay, so what does that mean? Is it still Byakia? Or is it Hero? So then it means that it could still have yes, been Toko, but no. Toko wouldn't have killed without the scissors. For... 
to think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought had never even crossed my mind. Because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Very yeah. interesting. This has become very interesting. I fully agree. I have no idea what this is going at this point. What about you, Makoto? After every well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like genocide. Jack did it, but but I I think he might not actually be the killer. So who is it then? What? But aren't you what? The one him in this first is place? crazy. Just seems to be oh, I'm so invested in this story at the moment. This is so nice like not knowing who did who did it. I am not the culprit. Yeah. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter Why, though? What is your you reasoning? With us right now? No, I am not so, who is it, then? We have Hiro, we have Mondo, and we have Taka. Please don't make it be Taka. Or Mondo. I guess it has to be Hiro, right? Oh, why? It could be Hifumi. I completely forgot about Hifumi, but I don't see why? Gonna keep going? Yeah, I, I'm having a feeling that it's it's Hero. He switched so yeah, he switched so quickly. But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing that can, we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means the killer is a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Man, so I'm guessing I need to select the run right now. Celeste's account. Wait, what was that again? What did Celeste say about the warehouse, right? What was it with the warehouse that she said? Oh, the duffel bag. Yeah, the duffel bag. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but I'm gonna be. Did nobody get a look at the killer? It can't have been Taka, right? <laughs> yeah, that was Celeste. Oh, shoot. No, this is not wrong. No, that's not wrong. No, that's wrong. There we go. We got it. I mean, we've got time plenty. We've got 13 whole minutes to solve this. And that's only counting the times that I have to do something. It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. Mm-hmm. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into It's confusing to refer to him as a guy right now. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. Yeah, we didn't find that. So who has it then? Better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. He was in a hurry. Why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone was waiting for him. Oh no! Didn't Mondo have an agreement with Chihiro? Oh no! Is it Mondo? Who is it? Who's the killer? Is it, is it Mondo? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items. Are you sure? What? What is so obvious Did about it? Celeste? Did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag. All the bags, the bags are the same. So all bags are the same. So here is track jacket really uh, holds some clue about the killer. Somehow it's really hard to believe. This is so ridiculously exciting. I have no clue where this is going. Not a single clue. I knew Taka has talked about jackets, but I don't think that's a clue. Do we? Yeah, okay, sure. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific track? What do you mean the specific Yeah. He picked that track suit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. Okay. So what you're saying is the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? Okay. My tracksuit is black. Uh-huh. I, I don't even have a tracksuit. Because this exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit, personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the... No way. Uh, okay, I missed something there. Um, Celeste's account was that 
everything was the same color, right? Uh, Hero did say something about getting it from the warehouse. No, it's not. Shoot. Uh, there must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Okay. Sure. I don't even have a tracksuit, because exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit, first of all. No, it's not. Uh, I don't know. Yes, it is. Good. I have no clue where this is going. I, I don't know what to do, guys. Please send help. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, no, wait. Oh, wait, maybe use the Celeste account on that? I don't get it. I don't get it. Help. Help. What he just said without even realizing it. He's right, what he just said now is really odd. How did he know something like that? How did who know what? Oh! Wait, um... Uh, has Celeste name dropped that the, the thing was blue? Let's try again. Not trying to fire that, just... The was the same yes! Oh no, it is Mondo! No! What did you just say? Huh? Oh no! When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... I saw him stuffing a track jacket into the duffel bag, and then I assume he had it after exercise. He didn't say the color. No, she it's Mondo! No! Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? It was blue. Oh no! Oh no! Began the trial. The only one I told about. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I, I just. Oh no! I saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. Yitaka, I, I, I feel so bad for you, man. Yeah. I feel for you right now. So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last oh, night. Oh no! He walked past me. And he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Oh, no, Mondo. You just goofed yourself up, man. You have bingus your lost bingus. Oh, no. That's why you said you knew who did it. He put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. Wait, why? But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. Uh, because I hate him. <laughs> uh, the way he was acting, I guess. The way he talked. Nope. There was a snake you only called, and after he was killed, you happened to refer to one. Oh, it was. Are you a witch? She's a witch. You're possibly frightened. Oh no. I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Oh no. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I, 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 uh... Oh no. Um, Here it is. What does he have? Well, it happens to be an e handbook. Oh, right. I found it laying on the ground. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to Chihiro? I'm guessing. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the Oh crime. right, yeah. For a fact indeed, but it's busted. It won't even turn off. Wait, what? The culprit broke it to get rid of But they were very unbreakable, right? You're right. They're not. Yeah. They're totally broken. Yeah, exactly. This one does appear So how did they do that? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? Honestly, my guy, I have no idea. How did the handbooks break? There's only one possible explanation. Uh, by uh, b exploding bug, uh, hacking it, hitting its weak point. Uh, there has to be a weak point. I think he mentioned something about this. Then somebody knows. Yeah, somebody knows the weakness. I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already. <laughs> Why would we want to break our own handbook? Just make it a rule. Don't break your handbook. <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushing. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. But you can allow me to make special a special announcement. announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is 
When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, the sauna. Suffer a meltdown and totally so how about Takas? Oh no, because he wasn't wearing his clothes. But Mondo was, so I'm guessing he had it on him and then it broke, right? Uh -huh. Well, because Mondo was in the sauna with his clothings on. Who might have brought their handbook into the sauna? It had to be have been the one who wore all his their clothes into the sauna. It was... I'm going the other way this time. That is a scary face. I keep scrolling the wrong way. It was Mondo. Yep, uh, it was Mondo. I'm sorry, Taka. <laughs> I feel so bad. Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long. Yep, and then he was wearing his full outfit. Oh, fun. I, I, I. This is a funny twist because I'm guessing I have to go into battle with Taka right now. Oh no, that's not the case. Okay, I thought I was going to have to make one of those uh, rhythm beats again. Oh no, broken e handbook. To hear was e handbook and the card reader. Sure, sure. Well, my goddamn handbook works just. Wait, oh no, no, wait. That was to hear was handbook thing. Okay, there was two things. There was no two things. Okay, so, uh, the card reader, no, it's a broken e-handbook, it's Chihiro's handbook. He used Chihiro's handbook, I'm guessing. Oh no, wait, I get it, I get it, I get it. I think we just need to use broken e-handbook as a, well, show it then, show us that it works. Or is that Chihiro's handbook, because that wasn't... Uh, come on, man! I know which one it is. Yeah, give me the time, give me the time. Give me... That's not true! What? Oh my gosh, it... Okay, it, it is about... Then show us, right? Broken E handbook. Go, 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 go. Interesting. Blah, 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 blah. Well, my... Does it, though? There we go. Yeah, prove it. It's like with uh, Leon. This is the final. This is the the thing that you cannot disprove. Wait, so it was Chihiro's thing? <laughs> oh, right. It's Leon's. I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually worked. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. Ah, interesting. Okay, so just show us. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake. Son of a... Sorry, Mondo. You have to be Taka, wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, we are going into the rhythm beat with Taka. Then why don't we Aren't we? Everything will be... Okay. Yep, let's do it. Okay, there we go. Um, so she was in the storage room. Then, uh, uh, then Rudenberg uh, 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 saw her. Celeste. That's it. Uh, what she saw was the jacket. Where is it? Oh, there's a lot. The jacket. There we go. And she quickly stuffed it in. Bye. Went away. And then um, went to the boys' locker room. Oh, these are getting more complex. Um, Used her e handbook, I think this is, and then went into the boys' locker room. Uh, there was somebody right there, which was Mondo, who was then creeping over her. She was putting her stuff into her locker room, and then wait, what's happening next? Oh, he grabbed the dumbbell, so not this just yet. I think this has to be it, right. Oh, she just got killed like that. Just that easily. Then the thing was bloody. Oop. Blood everywhere. Blood, bloody thing fell to the floor. Or, because this is the carpet, maybe this should be the poster. I think? Let's see. Okay, he killed uh, Chihiro. Rolled up the carpet. And replaced it with the other one. Oh, wait. Maybe... This, I see the other thing. Maybe this should be this? Right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, let's see, what more do we have? Oh, we have plenty of time, so that's fine. 
Uh, then he rolled up the carpet, in which case he replaced that. Oh, and he also took this down, I guess. Then he picked up the... Oh, wait, this thing again. Uh, then he picked up the body. Wait, so how did he have access to the girl's locker room? Oh, no, wait, he didn't. Wait, no, how did he? I'm a little confused here. Okay, let's actually skip this for a little second because there's other things that I can fill in which would make it easier. Now, he was in the girl's room. Uh, he... Oh, and then... Oh, wait, it was Byakia that came in and he thought, well, you know what, let's pin it on somebody else because I'm a weird guy if, because of that. You know, I, I'm just that weird. I'm just that goofy. I don't really care about dying. I just want to make it look cool. Wrote that on the wall and then it looked like it, but it wasn't. At the same time, Mondo was throwing this into the sauna. And then he... And then the thing broke. Is that that? Okay, so I missed a little step here. What about this then? What is this supposed to say? I'm guessing he went to the girl's room and he used... Wait, where is that? When did he pick that off the wall? Oh, he's rolling it up. Uh, this shouldn't be this, this should be this. Okay, so when... How did he get into the girl's room then? Oh, because he used uh, the other handbook. He used the one of Sa Sa Sakura. Oh, Sakura, uh, Sayaka, I mean, of course. Okay, so let's run this through. Uh, you know what? I think it's fine. Let's reenact it. Let's see how good we are. Exactly what happened. Okay. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Okay. Yeah, she was busted. Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. What is that? Yeah. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? Yep. Okay, hastily got off. <laughs> she actually waved. What does that say? Ah, AOT 2? She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. Mm -hmm. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' Well, because she was a boy. Yep. There we go. Simple, because she was really a he, which is why he was yep. able to use his own handbook. Okay. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. Mm -hmm. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Jahira, and attacked him. Poor guy. And that's where the blood stains on the poster. Yeah, so that was correct. Mm hmm. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Mm-hmm. So why did he do it? What was his secret to hide then? To try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet, then removing the poster, yeah. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, but this alone doesn't prove that the killer Because oh right, he swiped it for another one. Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed and using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. Nope. No, I didn't lay out my reasoning right. I need to rearrange the event of this case. Wait, do I have to do the entire thing again then? Uh, what is this supposed to be? What is he doing here? What is he doing here? Is he first rearranging the room? Is that what this is about? Let's try. The killer is you. Okay, blah 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 blah. Please say this is correct. After all, using one of those. Yes, there it is. Thank you. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet in the post. Oh right, because the carpet is already here. I see. They changed the layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. To pin it on one of the girls, yeah. That could have been the end of things, but no. Byakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. Yeah, why did he do this, though? So, 
after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. Yeah, then he did everything to make it seem as if it was the killer. Uh, the, the Jack, uh, Jack the Ripper person. Then he wanted to create the illusion that... Genocide Jack, that's his name. Her name, I guess. Genocide Jill. Around the same time that Biafia was putting together the killer... Mondo was at this there, point... To destroy the destroying the handbook. Bam. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew Oh, wait, that said act 2. I uh, I get it now. The reason they knew that is because that's how it all played out. And then the killer is Mondo. Oh no. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? Yay! I feel so happy. <laughs> oh, Mondo. Yeah, so we are going to play the rhythm game against Taka. A new element has been added. Oh, what? What now? Let's talk a little bit about Fever Time and Nega Time. During a bullet time battle, if you press Space Key, Fever Time will activate and the tempo will force to its max. At this point, even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. What? That's nice. So you can push RMB, LMB, RMB, LMB, however you like to destroy the opponent's verbal assaults. Oh, thank you. But this only lasts until your focus guard runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, it wouldn't be fair if only you got access to this special item, right? So we've also prepared something called Nega Time, which is that your opponent can use. If the opponent activates Nega Time during the bullet battle, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. If you were to activate Fever Time at this point... No, never mind. I'm sure nothing will happen. I don't know what it was worried about. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, of course we're gonna have to try that then, right? A moment of truth. F it's funny that it's against Taka. Show me some evidence. Pew, 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 boom, pew, 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 pew. Oh, wait. Oh, it's already going. Wait. I'm doing this. Oh. There's nothing. Oh, wait. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. And won't listen. I refute you. But like I can still see it. Show me some evidence. It's <laughs> pretty easy. You're corrupt. That was pretty nice. Final strike. Broken the hammock. Show me Without any proof, you can't put any of this on him. I can. Oh wait, I just have to fire, I remember. Ba Bam! Go! Sorry, Taka. Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon, in which case Yeah, we can just we check. Can just check once we do that. We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mondo. I did it. I killed him. No. <laughs> Mondo, no. Oh, yay. Give me a hundred thousand coins, please. Oh my goodness, I have so many coins. <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> Bruh! I got no choice, man. Yeah. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Oh, Go no. ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. It's no fun. I don't like it. What? I hate this. Oh, I really hate this. Okay, quick story time. For the previous episode, I had two thumbnails uh, available, which are one of Mondo and one of Baya uh, Byakuya. And I was in doubt which of these two I would use. Uh, if I would go for Mondo with the Bingus jokes, or if I would go for Byakuya because he was acting strange. Um, now it's pretty clear in which order they uh, come, which is also the order in which you saw them, because this is all pre-recorded. <laughs> so, uh, well, it's good to see that neither goes unused. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. Yep, I knew it. Taka couldn't do it. You're treating very you're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I refuse to believe it! There's no way! No way you could kill someone! Sorry. What is this? Why are you apologizing? Why? Why did you do it? No! 
Well, it looks like Mondo has taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. The story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Oh, in a romantic relationship? <laughs> oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the control key to fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Anyway, there once was a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as, he could, as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he had tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen this as his way out. Now, nobody will be able to say anything about even though you were a boy. No matter how tightly he wrapped himself in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken deep roots inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Like she's chanting it. Weak, 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 yeah! Since the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets, which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro was actually a boy. And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. sorry, I don't really want to talk about it just now. But I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong. Then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly... That would be the first and only chance he would get at it. When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help from there. And the person he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. Yeah, it sure was! The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were, so Chiro's probably figured out that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep that secret. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will get help me give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did. To keep the promise that he made to Chihiro. Huh? What? What he did? You mean... That's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? It could have been part of it, but I don't think that was the main reason. But how does moving the body keep a secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So... He tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girl's locker room and stealing his handbook. Then, Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd make to Chihiro, who he also killed? Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So, so why, why did you? Because, no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. So that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing mem memories and secrets exposed. That's impossible! Nothing could have been that bad! Something it did not want anyone to know? Even if it means killing someone? It's impossible! 
How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. That embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey. You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. No, what? Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. It's Elvis. <laughs> Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Awada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. So he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang into the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang. And his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. But then Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday. His brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I, I gotta get stronger. Just... Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what. I gotta win. Don't I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy stuck. Uh-oh. Bye bye The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Oh. Oh. What? Lying in his kid brother's arms, the other brother delivered his final words. M my bad, kid. I binged up. Sorry. Cause he knew the word bingus. Oh, and he also knew it was his brother's fault. But Daya never blamed for him for what happened. Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's a team you and me put together. It's a... a, pr a promise between men. He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and keep the promise of his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I, I'm strong. I just... Strong, strong, strong. Which is ironic because that was exactly what uh, Chihiro was saying the opposite of. Weak, 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 strong, strong, strong. And yet, as soon as that killing game began, he realized no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. And then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on this secret. Mondo killed his own older brother. No matter what, I could not let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. So that's why. I, that's why I... I... I Mondo. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with all kind of fuzzy uneasiness, and I just started swirling around. I'd never felt anything like it before. I, 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 just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety weighed down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... He told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus! Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, huh? I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone find out, you... You would... But You're right, but... I want to change. I ripped myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. It felt like I was, he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong, it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You. So what? You're saying I should just say it? Why? You're saying if I really am, Why? I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? 
I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I've never had. So I was jealous of him. Je and that jealousy broke me. Are you making fun of me? I'm strong? Are you Bingus kidding me right now? No. Well, I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mundo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did you want me to do? What was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to just sit back and let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? What's, What's wrong? wrong? Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, no, I, I just... just oh, I really admire you. I admire your strength. This is so sad. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Strong, 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 strong. Stronger than you. And stronger than Daya. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet, covered in blood. Gosh, gosh, this is so sad. I had the dumbbell in my hands. I was just staring at him, down on the ground. Hey! I killed him. Killed him. Oh no. I killed you. Oh no. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always. Been. Oh no. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo, he was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side of him from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it. <laughs> Look at him. You see, you're all just like him. For a secret for the past, for a memory. For that, he killed another living human in cold blood. He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't. You bastard! Just shut up, you son of a bingus! Go ahead, say that again! I dare you! Yeah. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. Talk up, please. Is what I want to say, but... Unfortunately, I can't do that right now, because the time for punishing is fast approaching. I was scared that talk I was going to hit the bear for a second. P punishing? Yep, it's time. That's what I promised you, right? The black and dead disturbs the peace will be punished. Hold on! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Mondo has been found guilty. Yep, bye Mondo. At least we'll get a cool cinematic out of it. <laughs> oh, is he gonna circle him to death? The cage of death. Uh oh. Bye, Mondo. Oh, he j jumps off. That's harsh. Yeah, that's not gonna feel good. Man, this is going fast. What? What's going on? Where is he? Jesus, what? They turned him into butter? <laughs> no, no. Okay, well, Mono is butter now. Love and death, and your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be my brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Oh, Taka, man. 
Yeah, he's going crazy. Staka sat, screams, invaded our skulls. We were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, he had to. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Uh, Byakia? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because this game is life or death. I, I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response. Except that However, I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime hole too? <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. The night grew late and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mono coming out of the girl's locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. What? You mean you actually witnessed the murder? So you're saying that you knew where the culprit was from the very beginning? Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right there at the beginning. Which is why I decided to land a, hel a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene. But, but damn man, if you hadn't figured it out who'd really done it, you would have been dead too, right? Well, obviously I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. Byakia turned and looked to me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eye piercing into me. Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Once I do decide to become black and I know now who I'll have to watch out for. Uh, uh. So that was your reason. Are you satisfied? Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. Ah, I'm next! I'd like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. All this punishment and all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope into despair. Damn. What do you mean? 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 Good grief, I don't understand what you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor. I think it's the start of a terrifying friendship. Shut up, I would never stoop to the level of childish criminal like you. Let me just say this, after I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm going to find you and kill you, understand? In the name of my family. Oh. Oh, so cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. Temper, temper. Sounds like someone needs a nap. Well, anyway, like I was saying. Ah, so there is a mastermind or another student. This is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? What? We haven't had a girl kill somebody yet. Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping. Is he it. insulting uh, Leon and uh, Mondo? Or is there another murder? So just do your best to make things more exciting from now so on. So there okay? is wor somebody working from the inside. After all, that's what everyone wants to that's see. That's interesting. There's one thing I'd like to ask as you. As as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. <laughs> Who is it? The 16th high school student. Yes! Woo! I knew it! I knew it! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, right on the freaking money. Let's go. 
took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that... And nobody'd be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their... Friends. So... Okay, if I have to guess who this person is, by extension of just pure logic reasoning... Oh my goodness, this recording has been going on for three hours. What? Oh right, I had the entire talk with my neighbor. Yeah, that's all gonna get cut out, of course. But, uh, if I have to guess who this is, um, Kyoko, because we don't know which ultimate she is, that seems to make the most sense. Maybe Toko, but I'm gonna guess Kyoko because we know so little, so little about her. But there is a 16th student. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Oh, that's so freaking nice. Boinky boink. Bye. <laughs> Somebody's sniffing. What? Ugh. I know I shouldn't cry. Ah. Uh, but this is a weird. It, this is why is she in so little clothing? I feel uncomfortable. No. I can't take it anymore. No. Getting out of here anytime soon. Hey, oh, you're way too fun to quit. It's impossible. Don't give up on life, I please. Can't let myself think about how much I want to get out of here. Donuts. <laughs> I need to eat some donuts. That'll cheer me up. Glazed donuts, twisted donuts, jelly donuts, cream-filled donut holes, malasadas. I don't know that word. Okay. Oh god of donuts. I'm praying for a wonderful encounter. I am Aoi right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please forgive me for breaking the, the nighttime rule. Right now for me, donuts are absolutely necessary. Uh-oh. What is this? It sounds like it's coming from the bathhouse. I'm super scared, but... Is, is someone there? <laughs> what is that? A next generation legend. Stand tall, galactic hero. That's a fun chapter name. Ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be it. We have had a very exciting trial. I really, really, really like this trial. I mean, the last one was excited too, because it, it it's, a, it's a completely different game. Because in the one, I knew exactly who did it and why, and it was just about figuring out how the trial works. And in this one, well, this took me for a roller coaster. So at first, I went in thinking it was Toko. Kind of right on that one. Then I switched, maybe it is Byakuya after all, which I uh, got rid of at, at some point during the investigation. I was like, ah, oh, it's not gonna be Byakuya. He's gonna kill somebody at some point, but it's not gonna be right now. And then I thought maybe he did, did do it, right? We had the entire conversation then. And then suddenly I thought maybe it was Hero because, well, Hero seems like the, the wild card to me right now. There's a couple of people that can still pretty easily die without making a large story impact and Hero is one of them. It would, well, it wasn't him and then it was Mondo and I thought, no, it can't absolutely not be Mondo because Mondo and Taka are very nice and they could never kill and oh, I was wrong. It was, oh, there was... As you can hear, I'm, I'm pretty speechless. But anyway, that is going to be it for now. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Make sure to check out the next episode when it ev uh, eventually comes out. Make sure to check out the previous episodes if you haven't already. That's super dumb. You've already checked out those. I'm pretty sure. If you stuck out episode, what is this? Five? All the way? then I'm pretty sure you're keeping up to date with the entire series. So uh, thank you for watching everything. Uh, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to comment, make sure to... Uh, your close ones a hug, make sure to call your grandma, uh, make sure to um, uh, make sure of everything else. And um, thank you everybody so much for watching again. This has been Silly Billy, and remember, watch out for your little brother if you run a biker gang. Out of